welcome to our language lecture. Today we're going to actually it's going to be more of a workshop, so it's going to be interactive. So we're going to talk about allied resources and affiliates as far as how we build that base. You are going to find this is where you're going to get the majority of your clients. Okay. And we talked about already hosting open houses at luxury houses, you know, to get those high net worth clients. But Joni, what we do is we talk to them, instead of a luxury client, we call them a high net worth individual. Now, as we go through this series, we're also going to be talking about um, where they hang out, what they do, other things we need to talk about, like time pieces. That's something they're going to talk about. Earlier, we talked about uh, just if you're going to talk to them about stocks. The biggest thing about that is what's in eating, what's in earnings, what's a cap rate. So when they're talking about stocks, you feel familiar to also be in that conversation with them. Okay, and you're not lost because they want to deal with people that speak the same language that they do. They're like anybody else on that. So today we're looking at how we develop the allied resources. And this is just like putting together your sphere. Your sphere is easy. You pull out your phone, you see who's on your phone, you download that into your CRM, and now you can start communicating. What we're all looking at doing is how do we take a look at our, our sphere and start expanding it to a different um, set of individuals that have a higher net worth and also a higher price point as far as what they're going to purchase. And this is what we're looking at today. So first of all, is high net worth individuals. I mean, that's what equals luxury, but we need to know our target audience. Who are we looking to add? Know what they value. And you attract the client that you are. So a lot of these things, you need to get that knowledge and also, also mirror. People like to deal with people that are like them. You ever notice that? Okay. If someone's clean, okay, they don't like to deal with pigmen, like on the peanuts, you know, with Charlie Brown and stuff. Same kind of thing. If they like pets, you're going to see the people with pets hang out together too. Same kind of thing. So what we're doing is we're looking at where do where we're going to uh, capture this audience. So let's brainstorm. And I gave you guys all cheat sheets there. So if you can't come up with one, kind of tell me what we've got there. Some of those are going to be what's on the sheet, or where do you think you can find or run into some of these high net worth individuals? Where are companies? Where do they work or where do we well, run? Could you be any of those. Where do they work? Where do they play? Where do they hang out? But that's why I came up with that sheet. One is home builders, luxury home builders. And we'll talk about strategies for each one of these because certain ones are going to appeal more to you. If you have a history of being in construction, that is going to appeal more to you. Okay. If you've got a history of working in cars, luxury car sales is going to appeal more to you. Does that make sense? Okay. So next one on there, we've got down the interior design collaborate. Okay. Uh -huh. Another one is staking companies. Okay. Oh, that one on there. Luxury home photographer slash videographers. Now, there's a huge difference between, and again, I don't know how long people have been in the business, but there's a huge difference between getting photos made by our current photographer, Curvio 360, and also a luxury photographer. There are different things they're going to accent, there are different things they're going to look at. So there is a difference in that. So make certain that you're aware of those. And you can actually go on YouTube and check out some luxury homes, and you're going to see some that have just nailed it. And those are the photographers that you want to seek out and utilize. Okay. Home picks is one. They're here locally. They do a great job at all of uh, high gardeners' photos. Attorneys. That would say the attorneys. Yeah. Attorneys. They're going to be dealing with also probate to divorce. So a lot of times they're going to come in contact with a lot of high net worth individuals. What's another one? Mortgage brokers. Uh -huh. And 
And one of the things on mortgage brokers, you want to make certain you know about are jumbo loans. Okay. The other ones are going to be 1031 exchanges. Even though this house may be for themselves, it may be classifying it as a commercial property into an LLC or something so they can transfer those funds through a 1031 exchange. So that will mount taxes and stuff too. Because they may sell one entity and that's when they purchase it another one. 1031 exchange. And that's something else we'll talk about too. What's another one here? Appraisers. Appraisers. Many times you get into appraising these high luxury apartment houses. We've got one up in Jolton. It's an eight million dollar property. It's in Jolton, and you think, how is that? And you go inside this house, easily twenty thousand square feet. It's got the wood hidden doors. It's got the separate kitchen uh, upstairs. It's got one downstairs, and all, each one of these kitchens, they also have another kitchen where they actually make the food. Okay. Yeah. Why did someone move to Jolton? Much, you know, it just makes me think, like, how did that house get there? And oh, he, he sold a bunch of capital down in Texas, moved up here, but still had a nice spread. I mean, gorgeous property, absolutely gorgeous. But that's how he made the money. I mean, he was from Texas on the when he came up. But <clears throat> an appraiser, they're going to be able to kind of tell you and help you with pricing the home, too, on those luxury homes because you just can't pull up the CMA and say, okay, give me all the 14 to million dollar uh, properties in Jolton. What's another one on the list there? Concierge services. What kind of concierge services can you think of? Concierge services, like catering food or? Could be catering. Um, house cleaning. Okay. I would think. Um, concierge services will that include um, uh, landscaping and all of that? It's going to be a little bit different. Okay. Could there even be like in home help? It could be in home help. It could be babysitting. Mm -hmm. I got to go out and look at these homes. I have a busy schedule. It could be babysitting or babysitting. Another one is her babies, babysitting pets. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're coming into town. They have to have someone to watch the puppies, you know, because you're going to go to all these homes and they may not have pets because you don't want to bring dogs in a home that you're showing. Right. And some of these. Another one could be an organizational service. It could be unpacking the items, not just unpacking them, but also working with them as far as where they go and how to organize their kitchen, where you put the silver, where we put the glasses, organizing closets. Professional organizers. Mm -hmm. What about in home sugars for? Kids of home at work uh, parents. Oh, absolutely. That would not be in the mainstream or school. someone nannies. Nannies, sometimes. Okay. Who runs a nanny service or who will take them on uh, to go to different errands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're not just by themselves or jump in an Uber and go somewhere. Well, they have uh, private drivers a lot of them up here. Uh, and new personal assistants. Yep. What's that? The home inspectors on there? Nope. That's a good one, that one. Home inspectors. You do not want to get your average home inspector to do your high end luxury homes. There are so many more things to look for. You've got the convenient home theater, you've got swimming pool, a lot of them do swimming pool services. Okay. You could have a bowling alley. Okay. You could have uh, things such as. Uh, networking services, making certain all the networks work, all the plugs work on those things too, and they may not even touch those. So again, your home inspection service is 100% different than a normal home inspector. All right, so you need to find out who has done inspections on ten million dollar homes, five million dollar homes. All right, and again, have them. You're building that relationship with that home inspector because you're looking at how can I get referrals. Many times they will do a home inspection before they post a property because they don't want to have any surprises later. Okay. I always recommend that. Let's do a home inspection so we don't have any surprises come inspection time. 
and stuff that fall apart. Okay. What else is on there? Um, high end home security specialists. Oh, I'm sorry, we skipped. Oh, we did talk about concierge. High end home security specialists. Yeah. Now that's going to be quite a bit different too. Exactly. That's going to have motion sensors. It's going to there and also have um, home automation. I think. A lot of home automation. Yeah. Too, where you can actually probably pull it up and you can actually open doors from your phone. Yeah, while you're across the world, <laughs> inside the world. Correct. Or can you know see what the cameras are going, how those cameras are being recorded? Yeah, cameras. Okay. Is it in the cloud or is there something going to be in house where they do that? Also for computer, a lot of times they do not want a Wi-Fi system. They want it to be direct wired so they can't get hacked. Do they usually have like their own backup too in case? Because I always think about once if the Wi-Fi are there and then it goes out. What oh yeah. To the this house? morning we went up in Joel's and I mean, he had this huge room and it had a huge server. Thing. And it looked, you didn't have, I don't know if you've seen our server here, but it made that one look tiny. Yeah. Yeah. So, do they need like their own IT guy? Or? They've got an um, IT guy that comes out that he right up the mouth all the time. Okay. But absolutely. But developing those folks too, because if someone's put in that system, that's only you want to get to know. Or if someone's looking to put in that system, you want to have that name where you can recommend them to go put in the system. So, again, that forges that relationship. Right. What else is on there? Fine arts consultants. Okay. Most high net worth individuals are investing in art rather than stock trading. Um, I'm sorry, they're what? Investing in art. Investing in art. Yep. And there are also programs just like you've seen the real estate investment companies. They're actually doing the same thing with art where a group of people get together and they buy a piece of art. So you actually own the piece. Of that piece of art. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. So again, there's a lot of different things. So going to the, uh, we're going to talk about where we meet these folks, but like the first center downtown. Yeah. Okay. Some of the fine arts too, but again, the arts is going to be a bigger and bigger part where people are going to be purified and investing in because it holds their value. Because it would be, I mean, they're not making any more of a sculptor that a gentleman who died who made it before, or an artist who painted. They just keep appreciating. All right. What's another one there? Private wealth managers. This is a tricky one. You're going to find out a lot of people that are financial consultants, and you're going to find out. All right, tell me about you know what you want people to invest in. How do you determine what products to invest in for them? And if it's just based on commission, that's not someone you want to do. You want someone that's always going to be looking out for. Them. What's been your track record over the last few years? Because it's been up and down the stock market. And just because it's down doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad person. It could just mean that um, his folks wanted something where they wanted to stay inside of a stock or a mutual fund. So think about that too. But develop some of those and then also take recommended recommendations from your high net worth individuals. Say, hey, I want to ask you, who do you use for your financial advisor? I've got some other people to ask. Would you recommend? Okay. And if you see the same name popping up, that's someone you want to reach out to. All right. What else is on there? Uh, property management companies. And that would be because a lot of times they're going to own multiple properties. They won't just own one property. They're going to have multiple properties that they own. All right. Another one is luxury. Well, luxury lifestyle magazines, as far as advertising those. This one, I don't think you're going to get into so much. This is one of the most expensive line items in a real estate part. It's something where you need to build your brand by advertising them. But some people advertise in it because they are not building their brand, it's more of an ego thing. So it's something where you need to take a look as far as what's my budget for the year. Where am I getting my clientele? Also, my clientele that I'm catering to, do they want to see their home advertised in a luxury magazine? Or do they want the anonymity of, I don't want people to know I'm selling my home. So it's something that you have to look at and make certain that you're crossing that line well and just take a look at your business, run your business 
because to run a one page ad in like luxury homes can be three thousand dollars. Okay, so again, if that's built into your budget, great. All right, if it's something where you're rotating it through some other homes or souls or something because you want to build your brand and name recognition, marketing is really tough by doing it this way where it's more pinpointed towards targeting the group of people that you want to get referrals from. That business is going to last longer too, and it makes you stand out. Because when you look at a luxury home magazine, how many people's names do you remember? I mean, a magazine like In Focus. Well, just luxury homes. Luxury you see, homes, yeah. yeah. Here in the office, you kind of look through it and say, "Oh, I know that person. I know that person." But you already knew them. Yeah. Is my whole point. It's not something where, boy, I want to call this person. Now. But if it's something where your homeowner that you're listing home for wants to see it in that, you need to build that into your cost of goods selling home. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you want to touch? Back? One other thing too, I want to touch on too with Keller Williams Luxury or Keller Williams in general. If you're a brand new agent and let's say you land a listing for a five million dollar property. It will automatically, you can automatically get it listed into Barron's, Pinta, Wall Street Journal, Market Watch. And there's two others I'm forgetting right now. Okay. And those are automatically just because you're part of Keller Reeves. You do not have to have qualified into Keller Reeves luxury. That is just because you're in Keller Reeves, you, that's available to you. You're going to ask me a question. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did you want to uh, talk on property management companies and luxury moving companies, 13 and 14? Yeah, this is really key. Them? On the luxury, um, let's talk about first on the property management side of it. The property management side on that, they're going to want a turnkey company. They're going to want someone that takes care of all the calls at nine o'clock on Saturday, you know, because they flush the little stuff there down the toilet. All right. And again, they're going to actually go through a little checklist to get them back starting it because they're going to own rental property most likely and they're going to want one person that takes care of it or they could very well own got one investor he owns a lot of airbnbs okay when covid hit he took a hit because of cancellations and stuff of probably half a million dollars in the first two weeks yeah some people canceling their stays and a lot of the um, airbnb companies like verbo and stuff like that well, said no, you need to refund the money because of this. So it was something where it said big hit, yeah. but he's got someone that goes through and they handle all that stuff. He doesn't get impacted by that at all. Okay, he doesn't, nothing involved with the day to day. If there's something where someone can't get in, they've got someone that takes care of it. That's what they're going to want when they look for a uh, property management company. The other thing with movers, too. These movers are not going to be just your two men in a truck or motivated movers. They're going to be someone that actually caters to the luxury homeowner that's insured, bonded, has multiple people coming to pack and to pack the truck and or trucks. And then how they package the trucks. Some of these things that you're going to look at for furniture are worth literally tens of thousands of dollars. Okay, and it's not something where, oops, I broke your china cabinet. Sorry. All right. It has to be something where they're going to fall through on it. And it has actually very much hand unloaded and put in place, unwrapped, and set up. They take away all the boxes that should be put in the service. They don't want to have you just drop boxes off and don't take care of it. They're going to want to get to unpack everything as well and place it where it needs to be. Awesome. And then working with that organizer again that you talked about before. All right. And then what else was next? Number 15, let it green with sustainable building consultants. And these people are going to be eco conscious solutions as far as you know. Uh, what type of things in the home do we want to make eco? It could be lighting in the outside or solar lighting rather than just piped in, you know, throughout the house. Uh, they're also going to be looking at uh, the water is it filtrated or not? How is it filtered? How often do they change it? Who changes it? Not they don't want to do it themselves, they want to have somebody able to come out and do that for them. Same kind of thing with their AC units, too. They don't want to get all those allergens blowing through their AC, they want to have the correct filters that are swapped out that keep their allergens down. It's the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one there. 
personal assistants? Yeah, personal assistants. This one right here is really tough finding the right one. These people are generally dedicated just to one person for a personal assistant. And I've known a couple of them, and they do virtually everything. I mean, they will bring in lunch, they will um, take people to the doctors, you know, other family and stuff. They also take care of the finance part, they represent some business meetings and stuff. Very, very unique individuals. But they are very hard to find. It's really tough to find someone to be that dedicated to that person. And a lot of times it can be seven days a week, 24 hours almost. But again, it's huge when you make contact with that person. They're actually working with other personal assistants, which can get you to referral on your door. Think about it that way. It's not just the one person they're working with, but it's also everybody that works for that gentleman, and then also everybody that they contact in negotiation and also personal ventures, too. All right. Next one. Um, high end transportation services. Mm -hmm. Limo services, also private jets and charters. I and mean, we got uh, John from the airport. There's a lot of private planes that fly in there. There's also different uh, jet companies where they can actually buy gift cards for so many flights on something of that nature. And it's a private plane. There's also ones where you, know, you can actually route it where, uh, depending on where they are in that high net worth is. Uh, sometimes they fly to some place and then they got to get back to their base station where they're based out of. You may go get a flight from here to there because they actually will get paid somewhat, not a full amount, to get back to it too. But knowing who those people are and making those contacts with them. If you're really into aviation or uh, in the airlines, maybe you can't in the airline industry, that would be something people would gravitate towards for wanting to know more about that. Okay, what we're doing is we're coming up with this whole big list, and then we're going to figure out which ones do we want to focus on for ourselves. Right? Next one, luxury car sales. And of course, that's something that everybody looks at. But we're just not talking about a Lexus or a BMW. We're talking about Lamborghinis. We're talking about Bergados. I mean, we're talking about all those really high end vehicles. Where do they get them? Who services them here? Okay. Who's a trusted service person for you? Are you buying a guy in here in Nashville? I don't know. I think there was a, uh, a luxury car dealership. They used to be on 8th Avenue South. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's still there or not, but I'm sure with all the influx of people moving here, I'm sure there is a luxury car dealership somewhere in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Luxury I've seen over here in the uh, gas station, I saw them. It was three Maseratis, and they were different colors too. One was a yeah. lime green, one was a blue, one was a bright, yeah. bright, bright red. Yeah, you I saw the Rolls Royce right in front of the Starbucks the other day. You so did. Rolls Royce had his his uh, the roof down. It was like one of these was like ninety degrees. And he just leaves it off. What's that other um, luxury car? Um, it's not a Bugatti. What's that other? Um, is it Aston Martin? Is that Aston Martin? No. Burn. There's one over in Brentwood that deals in import cars. It's right on the corner of Franklin Road. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we checked our with our um, I, something global, something or another. Mm -hmm. Global Motors or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's a little bit. But again, great way to get in touch with those salesmen. Again, they don't report with them. Because you're going to refer business to them, they'll refer business to you. The other one is hobbies or sports. Think about hobbies that they like golf, tennis, horseback riding. Okay, those can be expensive. Paula, she gets a ton of her business off of tennis, but she actually purchases a lot of tennis tournaments. So. so that'd be one golf. If you like golf, again, it's, it's a great one to do too. Uh, Adam actually talked about last week. He was to head up to a golf tournament, and he makes a lot of great connections here. Okay, cool companies. Most of them are going to have pools, all right. And again, you don't want the ones that just do the normal pools. You want to do the ones that have these huge um, flowing uh, backdrop, you know, for waterfalls, 
sprinklers, the underground lighting, the ones that are truly an event with the decoration of the trees and stuff around oh, yeah. as well. Professional associations, we already talked about attorneys, medical fields, things of that nature. Commercial real estate agents as well. They're going to be investing in commercial property, getting to know those commercial agents. They're going to tell you about somebody maybe out of state that's looking to buy a second home here or vice versa. If they live here, they're looking at buying a second home in Miami or in uh, Los Angeles. Also, cryptocurrency. This is something we're going to have um, people get into. I'm going to reach out to one way to know she sold a $79 million island last year. <clears throat> Okay, she is a heavy, heavy crypto enthusiast. So I'll see if I can get her. Like you know, we need a whole class on cryptocurrency. But it's something where she can get the down and dirty part of it and talk about, you know, what's the benefits of it, how to come about, what you need to know about it too. Mm -hmm. Another one is we already talked about private airports a little bit. Another one is marinas, boat and yacht series too. A lot of them are going to have different boats here. They may have smaller boats. But as you get down to the keys and stuff, you can hang these 120 foot, 200 foot dots. Okay. So those are something also that you need to go. Now, based on what we talked about, if you had to pick three of those areas to focus on, what would those three areas look like for you guys? I know for our business, the fine arts or something in the fine arts would help. Okay, so you circle that one. That's one. Um, I think one of, one of the areas I would look at would be luxury home builders, I think. Okay. Um, Computer designers. We would kind of fall in the, the arts too. Mm -hmm. Attorneys. Um, yeah, real estate attorneys. I think my third would be the concierge services to get potential clients. Yeah. Our business, you know, the, the, the nannies, the. What do you think? I'm not in that category yet. I mean, the most I've sold is like two million. So, where would you look at growing the business? What, what those categories you kind of talked about? Where would you feel most comfortable? The top higher people for me are my restaurant owners. Okay, so business owners and stuff. And I'll tell you what, that's huge. And that's supposed to get bigger and bigger. So, I would call my Mexican restaurant owner to so my Mm -hmm. I think those you know the people that are super in my own. There's multiple. I love those people. Eight, um, <laughs> the one in Franklin, or the, the one, one in Brentwood. Right. The one in Brentwood. Um, yeah. Well, there's the different. There's different owners. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, they're all like every single one is individual. So. And I'm okay. franchise. Okay, I'll get franchise style. I didn't know that. Every single one. Yeah. There's one in East Nashville too, mm -hmm. just down from Janet. Yeah, there, so, yeah, there's every single one is individually. Um, I actually have a client. Um, she owns, her husband owns one of them. That'd be great. Okay. So, Where else would it be? So one is business owners. And then the contract, and then the other big, my other big one, so the um, construction contractors. Okay. So builders then so, working towards, and it could be subs for working for luxury contractors too. Because they can get you a lot of things saying, hey, but now they can come in and back to do this huge staircase, and it's going to require a lot of curved handrail. Yeah. And that's something they just can't buy. I mean, they have to shape it there on the side. And they, they'll buy like, they don't buy like one, well, no, one of them did buy one hand dollar. But most of them don't buy like that one or two hand dollar home, even if they can afford it. Mm -hmm. Because they don't speak the language and then those three neighborhoods like be realistic, it would be only Hispanic folks. <laughs> so they don't feel comfortable. It's that cultural thing you talk about. Yeah. And they stick to the eight hundred thousand dollar house, you know, which is fine. You know, I don't mind. Um, six hundred thousand dollar house. But then they come back and they buy four houses. With so it's still at such. And they no, buy that's great. And again, remember 
Bell Reeves Luxury is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars minimum in different counties. It's different in Williamson County. It's one point two fifty. Okay, Davidson County is seven fifty. So and if it's eight hundred thousand, one of my the other counties around, it's luxury. One of my biggest spots right now where a lot of my folks are buying is Jolton. Oh, and they're running in the five hundreds because it's the club. It's still Davidson County. Oh, yeah, and it's really close to Nashville. So that's one of my tops right now. Jolton. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Then. Okay, so you've got some pinpointed, and you're going to find out as and Jane Campbell found this out here. She's a she's been with us for years here at this. Uh, office on PIs, not a game you should because she is a wealth of knowledge. But she started out in real estate several years ago and she just sold her people she knew. At that time, it was 200,000. And as those people aged, they got promoted, their homes appreciated. So now most of her homes are in the million dollar range. And sure. also, they're helping the children of those. Most of her business is referral. What's her name? Jane Campbell. She's got an office right here, around the corner, in the hall right here. Oh, but she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's one of the best businesses you get. However, when you look at that business, we'll talk more about how you grow that business where you can do more. And that's by adding that leverage to Keller Williams Keepers with our contract coordinators, also our job showing assistants, and then how you bring that person on board where they're emulating and representing you each time, but it leverages you and also giving them enough money where they actually can afford to keep doing that for you. Rather than just saying, I'll give you fifty dollars to show That's not what you want. You want someone that's going to be a partner with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so everybody's got kind of like three you want to take a look at. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one thing we take want to take a look at is. How do you even start a conversation with? I um, sold a house to the to the Garcias first mm -hmm. time I did my target. So the owner said sold them their second home. And um I just got to the restaurant and I he came, actually the owner came to to wait on me and um and he said, Hi, blah, 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 you know, would you like to start off with the margarita? And I said, how about if you buy a house off me, I, I'll get a margarita. Sure, why not? And he said, you know what? He said, I've been looking for one. But he doesn't have email or social media. So he didn't, but he bought a house with me here in front of me. Very good. Because of that, yeah. And I mean, I, I think they're one of my favorite, favorite, favorite couple of clients. So you just used your personality to establish that conversation mm -hmm. and got that business. That's great. Has he given you other referrals? I uh, know he hasn't given me other referrals. Okay. Yeah. But, but um, it's something I'm sure he's done too. Yeah, he, I'm sure he will. Um, his wife will message me like for Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day, Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving. Like we still keep in contact a lot. No, that's great. And we're going to talk about that follow up with our luxury people or high end people, or you know what we can do to further that relationship, where they're talking about you more to their group too. How would you start a conversation um, in arts? In arts, specifically yeah. going to art shows and like Franklin, an art show. You've also you know, got the, yeah, the art crawl um, in Franklin, downtown mm -hmm. Franklin. So going there and talking to people there. How do you start that conversation? Um, you could go ask you this. I'll buy this painting. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I usually don't do that, but I did it that time and it worked. I was like, oh, that's a this crap works. I can't believe it. You know, I thought it was like so tacky. I was like, I can't believe it works. It only has to work once. Yeah, I was like really impressed on it. I was like, this crap really works. I go, okay, whatever. Yeah. Getting out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, I was also thinking, you know, just because some business owners do come into our business and maybe going and visiting their business mm -hmm. and bringing things to their employees and doing that consistently. Yeah. One of the things too is if you want to bring value to a business owner, is say I want to go in and do a first time home buyer seminar because if someone buys a home and they have a mortgage, they're much apt to stay employed and probably stay with you if you help them find how to buy a home. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that's something you can bring value to. Them. And now they're saying, "Yep, come in and talk to my twenty employees about 
buying a home on a Saturday afternoon after they close up. I have a Tito's Mexican donuts on. I have sold to the federal if they're employees, yes. See? Yeah. And again, they'll say, well, I got a home and everybody wants to own it. I think that's the American group. And here's a fact you guys remember if you rent, your average net worth is $5,200. If you own a home, your average net worth is two hundred thirty-eight thousand. So, so much. Fifty-two hundred. Fifty-two hundred. That's if you took everything you had, sold it all, and paid off all your debts. You your have fifty-two hundred dollars left. Or if you own a home, the average net worth for them is two hundred thirty-eight thousand. So, if you have a hiccup in employment, health, family, anything, you can tell the homeowner is going to be able to overcome that without being devastating like it would for a renter. Mm -hmm. So it really gets down to if someone rents a home, you say, you need to buy a home, not because I want a commission, it's because I care about you, especially with your family. If you're looking at it that way, talking to your family is no longer slimy. And I know that's not on high net worth individuals, but it does make a difference. But if you're bringing value to those employees, those high net worth individuals in their businesses, they're going to really appreciate that. Because again, they're going to stay there because they feel stable. They've got a home, they're building equity, they're building in their network too. It's a huge advantage. Okay. Karen, how would you read down? I'm target group? I was just thinking, um, well, I circled luxury home builders. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the luxury home builders um, well, typically already had an agent that they hired to, um, to, to represent them. So I would, I would leave want to know how to break into having conversations with the luxury home builders before they decide on an agent. I'm not for sure um, where to start getting the information. And the other area, uh, as we sit here and thought about um, physicians, doctors, um, you know, people in, in the medical profession, as far as MDs and surgeons, mm -hmm. What I do, my, one of my sisters in there, so what I do, um, like you don't, they don't have time, you know, but I do take like during Christmas, a tray with individual uh, cookies and then my card, like I'll have it made really nice and then I sell it and I drop it there. And that's how I find the business. And also if it's something as far as the information, what I just gave you guys as far as net worth or if you want to home. Yeah, yeah, people get them all set real quick. Yeah, you can get like, you know, take the cards and put a little bit like a small one um, by the whatever tray that you leave there, and then you'll take the information with them if they're good. But if you need to go to the key or whatever, I mean, with cookies are very common. They are. Cookies are good. They're good. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so, one of the things going back to the builders, okay? Yeah. If it's a luxury home builder, don't get a closed mindset that they're happy with their age. They may yes. not be. Okay. What you want to do is you want to find out who that builder is, call and set an appointment and say, I'm going to call. And what I want to do is I just want to ask you questions as far as how you market your homes and what you look for in agents helping you with buyers, bringing buyers to you. You're going to put contribution in. You're not saying, hey, I want to list your home. Because what are you going to say? You, no. just have, no. I, you just have to be very confident and like very loose, you know, like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, uh, so like, how, how do you, um, how would you approach a builder that already has an agent? Talk to Jeanette Spinelli when she comes on. I want her to tell her story. Okay. And it is heart wrenching as far as what she went through, how she had to do it, including her husband or her fiance dying and stuff. And then oh, wow. she, had a guy that trusted her and kind of gave her a chance, but she is great. But again, one of the things that I don't want to take away that this could be a great story, but one of the things with that is, is you're going to just set up the expectations. Is I'm a, I'm an agent with Keller Williams, and one of the things we do is we have a lot of buyers coming into Williamson County that want to buy luxury homes. I would really like to see, you know, what you look for as far as for buyers coming in so I can help them do that. And also, as far as the quality that you put into your house, builders love to talk about the quality. So now, some are going to say, talk to my agent about it and say, well, I could, but I want to know what you expect. Okay. And it could just be a phone call to start with or a Zoom call. So, are they under an exclusive listing with, with 
For that house. For that house. Okay. Yeah. If he's got another house or another property, they're not under contract for that house. Okay, so when you see an agent on site, that doesn't necessarily mean that that agent has exclusive on all the properties. On every property he's got, because he would have had to sign. I mean, in that subdivision. Yeah. Remember, when we do a listing agreement, it is upon that property. That one property. Yeah. And so when you reach out to the builder, I um, guess I built to have multiple agents. Yes, that yes. Makes sense. So, so when you reach out to that builder, um, you go under the assumption. Like you see a builder, there's an agent uh, with an MLS listing with this new construction home. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you call the builder uh, under the assumption that that builder. It could be a closed transaction. Someone that's closed, it doesn't have to be an active one. It could be a closed one. Someone that closed six months ago. These guys, when they build homes, they don't build in six months. They'll take a year or two. Years right, to yeah, especially those. Uh, so you're saying that I can pick up the phone and call the, call the builder. And then they will tell me if they have an exclusive or they'll tell me. I wouldn't even bring up that conversation. You would not. All I would do is I would just say, I just want to know about what you look for as far as when I bring a buyer and also what do you put into your homes I should convey to my buyers. Okay. You're just wanting information. You're just wanting to build a report with Yeah. You. And, and I think to that point, to your point, Wes, it would, uh, do you think it would be a good idea to kind of do a little bit of uh, uh, research on that builder to see what he sold um, days on market with the existing agent to see if it's um, a good opportunity. Well, any opportunity is an opportunity, but just kind of be prepared for what he may come back and say to you. Um, well, you know, for example, what can you do better than the agent I have? I've got five houses that have been on the market uh, 180 days. What can you, you know? Well, he may ask you that. I wouldn't be expecting that at all. You would not. Okay. I would just be expecting just to get information from it, start to do an introduction, just build a report. One of the things is we're going to talk about after you find that is asking questions. You may find you have commonalities. You guys like to do the same things. You may have came from the same city or same state. Okay. Also, do you have mutual acquaintances? So you can build on those commonalities. Also, what type of personality is that person? If you go back to a disc, are they a D, an I, an F, or a C? And that's huge because that's going to tell you as far as how they're going to be communicated with. If they're a D, yeah. you're going to have a hard time nailing down to talk. If they're an I, oh, would you call? call? You just sit around for 40, no, 45 minutes. Yeah, because they're going to be here. And, <laughs> and if you listen for 45 minutes, they're going to tell you the best day you can ever talk to. Yeah. Okay. Do we have copies of your uh, PowerPoint here? I'll send it to you. Okay. Thank and you. And the other part is, you can use Crystal Nose. It is an extension for LinkedIn. Okay. It's an extension. It's an app you can download. The cool thing about Crystal Nose is it will pull up the person on LinkedIn and will give you the personality type. Really? Oh. Yeah. If they're an I, and I got that from Linda Baker, she's an agent down in Atlanta, and she has a great job down here. But on Crystal Nose, when you pull that up, if they are an I, then they want to know how you're going to market your home. You're going to bring in all the cool stuff as far as look at my flyers, look at where we're going to run any ads here, look how we're going to promote you on YouTube, you know, look how we're going to promote you online. That's what they want to see because it's an I, it's all about them. If it's a D, they just want to know the down basics. If it's a C, give me the net sheet. I want to see what they're going to do for me and how do I, how do I make more money for you? If it's an S, then you better bring pictures of your band. Okay? <laughs> and say, look, this is my puppy. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're going to do there. But again, Crystal Nose will tell you the personality type. If not, you need to ask to train that when you're having this conversation with people. And it could be at the art crawl. It could be at dinner when they're bringing you a free margarita. Okay? Free margaritas for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to know because it was on. Everyone's in charge, me tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Find what's his non property likes and say, I'm going to make a donation yeah. to your non property. Place. He would love that. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. My husband my husband does free services for ladies and they always want to tip them. He's like, no, just pay it forward or, you know, do that. The other saying. thing is, how do you get their business card? How do you get them their business card? Have your business card with you all the time. Okay. You should always have a stack in your car with you. All right. The other part is it could be electronic business cards. Okay. You've got Link, L-I-N-Q, which is an electronic type. There's several out there, but that way you can just 
Boom, you send it to them or touch your phone, and it'll automatically go to them. It's got all your contact information. Um, and anytime you send a business card, if you have a contact card in your phone, it should have your website, it should have your picture, it should have a name realtor in it somewhere. So if they just type in realtor, it's going to come up. It should also have your website, your YouTube, your Facebook page, your Instagram, your Twitter, but you should have all that on your contact card. Because they're going to check you out. I'm Make looking at making a business decision. The biggest thing that high net worth individuals talk about is one, they want anonymity, okay, where they have privacy. The other thing they want to do is they want to make certain that they don't get taken. They want to make certain that they're making a good decision. They don't want people to think they made a bad decision. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that they're going to be looking at. So, again, they're going to check you out. So, give them as much information as what you can. Okay? Remember, this is a long play. Okay? It is not something, well, not usually. Sometimes it is just going in to get a margarita and get business from it. Yeah, I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay. It's going to be something where it's going to take several conversations. It's just like uh, we sell Baton Rouge. Everybody understands we sell Baton Rouge, okay? It's a long term. A lot of times we're going to come in and say, yep, let's buy house. Those will come listen. A lot of times it's a process. It could be seven, eight weeks with them. It may be months. It may be a couple of years. But the thing is, is you're staying in that and that relationship you're building is going to help you foster other relationships. Yes, I know Tom Smith, it's a builder. Okay. I know Brandon Jenkins, built in Cali. I've talked to him. I've been in his homes or great homes. How does yours differ from his? Okay. Knowing about those things. The next one is being ready for slow development. And what I mean by that is don't count that I'm going to get a closing off of this within 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. It has to be something where you keep adding to that all the time. So if you never have enough contacts, remember that. It's on how you base those. So that's what you really have to take a look at. It's a long play game. It's like uh, Simon Sinek, the infinite game. You keep doing the same thing. And in the long run, you're going to win. But if you're just looking at the short term and making short term decisions, you're going to lose. If you're saying, I'll list that, I'll do it for a half a percent, and I'll pay 3% for buyer's agent, that's a short term. They're going to always expect you to do that, and you'll never make enough or sell enough to actually have your family enjoy the fruits of your labors and stuff that you want to do. What about um, the, the corporations um, that have uh, a reload department where they reload their um, CEOs here, COOs here, CFOs here? Relocation, Cal Williams actually has a relocation community. They have a limit of five agents per market center that can join in. Okay, you pay $199 per month. Most of those companies actually will only do business with a company that has a physical relocation department. Cal Williams established that. When they do that, it is a 50% referral fee. Okay, most of the time it's 50, sometimes it's a little bit less than that, but a lot of times it's 50%. And what they do is with Keller Williams is they will submit you and a couple other agents from them, and that way they can look, you know, that they want to deal with a female. So I was one, and Jay Campbell, who's one of our relocation people, is another, or Susan Salazar. They want to deal with a female. Of course, I'm going to be out on something like that. But it depends on who they want to work with. Now, on that, it's going to be the wife that's going out and looking at properties and stuff. So you, you're saying the 50% referral, that's between the agent and Keller Williams? No, that's what you're going to pay to whatever company is. Let's say it's like Mars Petco, okay? Mm -hmm. And they've got someone transferring here. They've contacted Keller Williams Relocation. And they said, i got somebody coming to Franklin. They're going to work with Mars Petco down in Springfield. All right? And we'll send them a couple agents. They select me. I help sell a house. I pay a 50% referral fee at closing. To, to well, it actually goes to Keller Williams, but then it goes to Pet Coast for Okay. Okay, it goes to the relocating company. Mm -hmm. But they actually set it up where they're getting money to give their client to an agent. Yeah. But it's a 50% referral fee, plus you're paying $199 each month. And you have to make a determination is that what I want to do? You talk to Susan and Jane and see what they've got referrals so, so far to see. It. You know, it make a good decision for you. 
Well, good, good thing about referrals like, uh, I'm sorry, real relocations like that is that they have a shorter time span that they need to get into something. It is. It yeah. can be a hot lead, but most, most referrals are going to be hot leads. Because what we do is when we get a buyer in, we actually put them in privity and we let them at the pipeline lead. So it's just like you're coming soon for a listing only it's for a buyer. For a buyer. And that way we keep conscious of them as far as we're calling every week, even they're saying, hey, hey, be a while before I come out there. Pretty smooth that question. Okay. All right, guys. Any other questions we've got? Thank you all for participating today. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll make sure you guys get copies of the slides here too.